are you a casual or a competitive player? Now, the right answer to this is you are a competitive player, most likely. Everyone's a casual player. Most people are competitive players. They don't know it yet. Now, if you think about this really, everyone is competitive. The aim of TF2 in a TF2 game is to complete the objective and defeat the enemy team. If you get a buzz from defeating that enemy team, you are kind of a competitive player. Okay, there's, there's a bit at the end of this video that I'll explain the very niche few people that aren't competitive players. And it's, it's very niche. There's honestly, there's not that many of them. So we're going to address some of the things that intimidate you and stop you from becoming a competitive player. And I'll try and debunk a lot of the things that frighten people. So here's my wee intro bit. So are you a competitive player or a casual player? Most TF2 players strictly play casual mode. They've maybe played competitive mode a few times in the Valve made version of TF of um, competitive, but being honest, it's not very good and Valve never really finished it. So for this one, this video, I'm going to be referring to the community made version of competitive where you use websites to navigate it and server IPs and you have to make a team and be part of a team. and. It, it, okay, so you, to do all this, you have to like not be on TF2. You need to go through the internet and find a team properly and communicate with the team members to say, oh yeah, I'll be there for that much, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's the type of competitive I'll be talking about in this one. So you're rather in one or two boats here. If you're watching this video, you're probably in boat A. Boat A is the boat of people that are strictly playing casual mode and have not spent any time playing competitive because they don't think it's for them or because of one of the reasons I'll be going into. And boat B is the people that are very aware of the meta, they know competitive, they play competitive, they probably even watch competitive, which I still to this day have never understood. And they can play competitive quite comfortably and know what they're meant to do as soon as they go in. So this video is almost exclusively for boat A. The newbies, as crueler people would call them. So for most players there's one big term category of things stopping them from getting into competitive TF2. And it's called intimidation. They're intimidated by the idea of playing competitively. Which is fine, everyone's intimidated by some things. So I'm going to go on to some of the things that do intimidate people that I'm definitely aware of. And I'll try and debunk them. Because most of these things shouldn't be bothering anyone. Or shouldn't be deterring anyone, should I say. So, you should... You shouldn't be intimidated, you should probably follow the meta already. You get me? Yeah? Yeah? So you're probably sat there going, oh, but I don't, like, you know, these guys are doing that and this and that and I don't even know. Blah, 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 blah. No, you, you know it. You know the weapons. You know the combos. You, for the most part, probably know the roots as well. And you know all this through trial and error playing or just by watching YouTubers, streamers, I mean, TF2 streaming is really not a thing, is it? But YouTubers, streamers, and competitive players streaming and YouTubing, which also happens. And you'll know the weapons yourself. You'll be like, okay, I've got the black box. I'm going to pair that up with the buff banner or the battalion's backup and make a really cool combo. Or maybe the conch, so I have mega health overload. You, you know these things. Uh, you're the pyro, you can do the puff and sting thing, you know the puff and sting thing, that's in competitive, everyone uses it in competitive. You know the melee weapons for the pyro don't exist, the axe extinguisher is kind of feasible now, uh, but it's basically power jack or go home. You know these little things. So if you're thinking, oh but aren't they using really weird wacky loadouts, the only reason that you'll see a competitive player using weird or wacky loadouts is one or two reasons. One. They have no idea what they're doing or two they're trying to pull some weird wacky new strategy that they're gonna hope and pray Works for them, but more likely than anything. It's not gonna work and they probably lose So, you know this you know these bits you're, you're doubting yourself Learning curves the only learning curves that you really have as a casual player and this sounds way worse than it's meant to come ac across but is class meta now you understand the rules of all the class I assume at this point and for most of this video I'm going to refer to Highlander because it's 9v9 so it involves every class so if you're an NG player or you're a what's the other class no one uses in 9v9 or uh, 6v6 so a sniper if you're a sniper or an NG or a pyro then 
everyone's involved in this list. So I'm going to talk about Highlander, but all everything I kind of apply and talk about will be about all of the competitive leagues and stuff. So if you play Highlander, then you probably aren't used to there only being one of each class. And those players are dedicated to following the best routes and strategies for their class compared to your average casual player. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I understand it. It makes sense. You, 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 you don't understand that... You, you'll understand that snipers should stand here and stand there and peek and stuff like that. And you probably don't understand that at the beginning of a round, if you've got nine players, it's not free go that way, free go that way, free go that way in a typical free passage kind of map. There's combos going that way, a different type of combo going that way, an engineer and a, someone going there, and the spy going a completely weird, wacky route to flank the team in a really confusing, long manner. Those are things you don't know. I don't know it for most maps and loadouts and classes. I, I don't know all of them. And you learn these things through YouTube video, trial and experience, and asking your team. I actually learned a lot in my last season of Highlander because my team had a coach. I know, it sounds so weird. Uh, my team had a coach and she was brilliant. She knew all the strategies and what to do. And before every game, about 10 minutes before every game, she'd be like, okay, remember, you're going here, you're going there, you're doing this, you're doing that, and you'll win. Never watched the games, but for the most part, when she was with us, we won almost every game. We did amazing. And that you'll pick up. You'll pick up over time and you, you'll discuss these things with your team and it's, it's really easy you'll you'll get the gist of it eventually and eventually even maps that you've never played before you'll look at the layout in a bird's eye view of the map and you go oh okay i can already kind of see roughly what the meta will be for this map it's simple you'll get there if you think you lack the skill to play competitive then think again i'd say by about 500 hours to a thousand hours plus you you know all the basic moves. I started playing competitive just under a thousand. I think I was nine hundred and ninety something, and I, I started playing competitive. Then you get the basic movements. You've got that in the bag. You know the weapons. You know the classes. You know the classes limits, limitations, strengths, and weaknesses. You get all that. The 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 skill to play competitive has no bottom after about five hundred hours. Don't worry about it. So then, kind of following off this whole skill ceiling thing, the ranking, it can be really confusing for some people. I get that. So what I'd say is if you want to get into competitive, but you don't know what rank you should be looking at, ask a friend. A friend who plays competitive, is very aware of competitive, like as in they watch it or something like that, but preferably someone who plays competitive, and ask them to go into a spectator mode or something like that and watch you for a game. Or record it with like OBS and then send it to them so they can have a look at you playing, like send them like 10 games or something like that. It's a, a lot of time, but you know, you get the gist. And ask them what they think. Alternatively, you can do what I did. And uh, I went in the lowest rank I could. I went into Iron. And in my first game of Iron, I got mini sentries out and I got the Widowmaker. And I went on like a six kill streak and I had more points. Then, who is it? The medic. I had more points than the medic and the demo man. And it was just a really stupid game. I, I got that. The iron, iron was eliminated from the Highlander roaster a long time ago. The iron rank, it was the lowest. And then I moved on to steel and I stayed in steel a while. And I, I really should be moving up into silver. I just haven't got around to it anytime soon. So ask a friend what rank they think you should go to. Or start from the lowest and move your way up. You'll get there. Starting out is very confusing for people. As in, you don't know how to join a team, how where to join a team, whose team you should join. There's a few websites and a few options for you. What I'm going to tell you is YouTube it. <laughs> YouTube joining a team and find out what type of team you want to play. If you're a soldier, a scout, a medic, the kind of world is your oyster, but if you're playing, I mean, even demo man kind of, but if you're a pyro, um, NG, sniper, or spy, you're limited to to kind of one kind of 
type of competitive, but there's different types of competitive that use different classes and different amount of classes and different weapons and different weapon limitations. And you only find out if you like it or not by trial and error. I personally only like Highlander. I don't like 6v6 or 4v4. It's just not for me. And um, yeah, that's that's literally all you can do. You can you can YouTube it. You can ask a forum if you're into forums. I'm, I'm not, but some people are. Uh, ask Reddit if that's what you're into. Reddit's one of your options for finding teams. Or alternatively, just check YouTube. There's hundreds of videos on it. And if you still can't get the information that you're after regarding joining a team or teams in general for competitive, then ask me and I'll make a video on it. And if I ever did make a video on it, it's in the description below and you've probably seen it. Hopefully, maybe. I don't know. Potentially. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all you can do. You can only do your research. Do your research before just joining a team. It, it makes makes it a lot easier and if you have any other reasons for being uncomfortable joining a competitive team then comment the reason down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible rather in response of a video which is unlikely or just a comment where I'll get back to you hopefully in like two or three days max now here's that niche part of the video I mentioned at the beginning reasons you might not be a competitive player it genuinely it's like one it's a big category but it, there's not that many people that are strictly in it. You just like to goof off. Perfectly fine. As I mentioned, everyone everyone plays TF2 because they want to complete an objective. That's what you're doing. You're completing an objective to win the game. It's not team deathmatch. It's it's completing an objective and winning. It's all about it's everything's about winning. Everything's a race. Everything's a race. But if you're that type of person that loves Hoovy, as in they log into TF2 and for four hours they're just a Hoovy, probably not for you. If you're kind of like Soundsmith, Soundsmith isn't a competitive player, and you get some really sick kills at the beginning as a demo man, but then really what you enjoy the most is at the end changing over to the sticky bomb launcher or the rocket jumper and doing some crazy stunts. It's probably not for you. If you are like King Raja and like to do crazy trimps, I mean, yes, there's arguments for trimping being usable and competitive, but if you just like to pull off super risky, super non-beneficial to your team maneuvers, where you only ever think about yourself constantly, like this is what you like to do, or you play similar to King Raja the way that he does, he's quite an aggressive demo knight, probably not for you. If you play like Musahulk, well, at least he used to when he actually was a TF2 player. And you're into kind of weird, wacky loadouts, pulling off really weird, wacky, like, hiding spots and stuff like that, and a kind of campy kind of style. Probably not for you. These these kind of play styles just don't really work with competitive. The whole lone wolf kind of approach, it just don't work. It don't work. You can be a fabulous player, but if your team loses, then you lose too. That's how it kind of works. Uh, these are the only people that I could honestly say aren't competitive players. Everyone can enjoy competitive time management, you know, like getting too into it, you know, if, if you, you, you can't commit your time to actually play it as frequently, then fine, just play the Valve one when you want. But getting actually into a team and playing proper competitive CF2 is absolutely awesome. It really changes the way you play. You will walk away from competitive and go into a casual server. You'll be a god. No joke, you will be a god amongst TF2 players, and some of the best TF2 players that you see in casual servers are because they're really into competitive and they're having a wind down. Because you can always goof off in a casual server when you want. Just don't, just don't bring that to the uh, the party when you're playing competitive. Anyway, I have been Jay Caliber. This has been me trying to debunk some of the rumors and well, not rumors, but thoughts people have when trying to decide going into competitive or staying and just playing some casual. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts or need some help with something, comment down below and I'll try and get back to you within, as I said, two to three days maximum at the moment. And I will see you guys for next week's video. Adios.